Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Fan TV, man. Back at another video. Out of content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, don't forget to comment down below. And if you're new here, go over here that subscribe button, man. Look, uh, so hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. You know, back at it Monday morning. Um, so we got to talk about Lamar Jackson, right? Uh, the will he won't, will he be tagged, won't he be tagged? It's obviously that he probably will be tagged. Now it's just a matter of fact of what tag we talking about. Exclusive, non-exclusive, uh, things like that, all right? Um... Now, we don't have to be getting to anything obvious, right? Now, the Ravens could have settled the situation a couple years ago. Uh, we know that. Uh, I looked up Josh Allen's contract. Josh Allen's contract was six years, 258, 150 million guaranteed, 100 million that signing, right? Since we care about the, uh, what we want that signing. So now, Lamar, right, possibly, uh, if we're going off of what Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Watson, excuse me, got, which is, uh, what, 230 guaranteed. Lamar probably wants 230 plus guaranteed. Not fully guaranteed, but just, you know, just guaranteed on the contract, right? So the Ravens have cost themselves between, you know, probably 80 to $100 million by waiting. And this is not too dissimilar to what happened with Joe Flacco, right? Because signed Joe Flacco for a cheaper contract. They decided to play it all the way out. Ended up having to make him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Uh, rest is history right there. They repeat history again, and here we are. All right, so let's get past that, right? That's where the Ravens are. It's not great for them. Who cares? It's, it's what they did. You know what I mean? Can't read really nothing about it. Now, Jeremy Fowler over the weekend said that uh, the Ravens are considering the non-exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson. Now, y'all already know. Y'all watch the channel enough. I don't really care too much what Jeremy Fowler says. A lot of his stuff is just recycled news over and over again. Not really anything new. Uh, to me, this is the same thing, right? Of course, they're considering a the non-exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson. They're, they're considering everything. Um, Eric DaCosta at his combine presser literally said that the Ravens have four to six plans uh, regarding this situation. So let's just be obvious here. You know, that's non-exclusive. That's exclusive. That's trading. You know what I mean? That's three plans right there. So, of course, this is one of the plans that they are considering. So um, to me, that's not really anything newsworthy about it. All right. Um, now, let's talk about whether or not the non-exclusive tag makes sense for Lamar Jackson. Let's just see if it makes sense. It only makes sense if, and this is a big, big if, if the Ravens have no intention of trading him, right? Now, if the Ravens have no intention of trading him, this makes a lot of sense because this is why. There's obviously something between Lamar Jackson, Eric DaCosta, Steve Bashadi, that there's a gap in the negotiations. There's something there. We don't know exactly what it is, but obviously there's something there, all right? Now, Lamar Jackson gets to go out and shop for a contract, right? Whatever the Ravens aren't willing to do, another team may be willing to do. If I'm the Ravens, if I'm Eric DeCosta, I got to be thinking that I'm comfortable enough letting him go out there knowing that other teams won't offer whatever it is I'm unwilling to, whatever it is that I'm unwilling to match, right? It's extremely risky. I'm not saying it's not. Obviously, it's very, very extremely risky. But this allows, this allows the Ravens to use um, other teams to negotiate with Lamar Jackson for them. It only makes sense, and I repeat, it only makes sense if the Ravens intend on matching any offer. Because if the Ravens, if they let, they let this tag go, the non-exclusive tag, um, for one, if somebody drops a, drops a deal on him that they're not willing to match, uh, this is going to be extremely detrimental to the front office. Because you let Lamar Jackson go for two first-round picks. When Russell Wilson just got traded for, what, four last offseason? And players. And players. So Lamar Jackson is worth at least three to four first round picks and a couple of players. So if you're going non if you're going non-exclusive tag, to me that's that's the Ravens saying, hey, look, Lamar, we still want you here, but we want you to get the deal that you want. So see if other teams are willing to offer you that deal that you're looking for. And if they are, we'll match it. Cause that's the only way the non-exclusive tag makes sense, right? Um I, I put it out there for you guys to answer whether you guys thought it was a good idea or a bad idea. And um, a lot. Uh, the, the poll, the poll was interesting. Hold on, let, let me let me get to it. Let me get to it real quick. So I put the poll out yesterday, and you guys, ninety six votes, seventy one percent said bad idea. So, so you guys aren't a fan of the non exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson, which I understand. I I, I I completely get that. So, um, two first round picks for a team that needs a quarterback. Say you're the commander. Say you're. You know, a whole list of teams who need a quarterback. Say you're the Las Vegas Raiders, right? I don't even know if they have two first-round picks, but say if they did, right? Um, 
that's nothing for you. You feel like you're a quarterback away? I'll give you two first-round picks right now. And that's absolutely nothing. So you only do the non-exclusive tag if you feel like when Mari Jackson's value uh, that you're not that, that you haven't been willing to negotiate with won't be met out there. And whatever contract he does get out there, you'll match right away. Because if you don't, and you let Lamar Jackson leave Baltimore for two first-round picks, it's a fireball offense. It, it, it honestly is. Let Lamar Jackson leave Baltimore at all might be a fireball offense, but I feel like that's more on Steve Bashali, as I've said multiple times, than it is Eric DaCosta. If it was up to Eric DaCosta, I believe Lamar Jackson would have the contract he wants. But Eric DaCosta got an answer to Steve Bashali, who holds the money. So that is what it is right there. All right. Um, now, the compensation on the 32, on, sorry, on the uh, non exclusive tag is $32 million. There's no way Lamar Jackson's playing for $32 million last, no, next year. Okay, it's, it's not happening. When the, when the exclusive is 45 and when you got guys like Daniel Jones who reportedly won $45 million, guarantee, uh, $45 million a season on his next deal, which I don't believe Daniel Jones would get that. But anyway, so if that's the case, right, you, there's no way Lamar Jackson is going to sign that with the intent of playing on that tag. So if he signs a non-exclusive tag, he's either the Mavis either matching any offer or that, that, that's really the only scenario I can see because you can't let Lamar Jackson leave the building for two first round picks. So if it is an all exclusive tag to me, that's good news for the Ravens. I feel like a deal will be done with the Ravens because like I said, it's too detrimental to let him go for two first round picks. doesn't make any sense. Now we got to talk about the other side, which is the exclusive tag, $45 million. It's a lot of money. It is. Um, in my opinion, if the, if the Ravens have Lamar Jackson to the, to the, to the exclusive tag, um, next season becomes very difficult. It really does. And like I, I've said many times before, this has nothing to do with Lamar Jackson and it's too much money for him. No, he's worth that money. You know, get your money. It's just that it's a $45 million cap hit. If the Ravens were to absorb that kind of cap hit with the with where the cap space is right now for them, um, free agency, it ain't going to happen. It's really not. And a lot of teams going to be let go and be very, very different. Right. And that's nobody's fault but the Ravens. No, no let, let me be clear on that. Um, so that exclusive tag is if the Ravens sign into the exclusive tag, to me, they're shopping for the best trade offer. That's just my opinion, because the exclusive tag, there is no way in my mind. The Ravens can sign a bunch of exclusive tag and have the kind of season that they want next year, because you're going to sign into that tag. You're going to have to cut players to get under the cash space to even have any semblance of a normal uh, 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 offseason. That's really just to sign rookies, right? So next year, Ravens will be Lamar Jackson on, on that expensive tag, a bunch of rookies, not a bunch of rookies, but the rookie picks that they have, and some of the team from last year. And they might still be good with that, right? New offense, defense stays mainly intact, maybe. They might still be good with that. But the path to success is a lot harder. And the Ravens have made that, have put that on themselves. Is that this is no on nobody else? So, um, if they sign a tag, right? Because you know tomorrow is the is the tag date. So he either have that franchise tag today or tomorrow. I think it's by four p.m. The Ravens just take things right up to the deadline. So I would assume it will be around three thirty tomorrow. We'll know about what's happening with Lamar Jackson. Um, so if he signs that exclusive tag, if he signs that non-exclusive tag, either way it goes, the Ravens got to be cap compliant within like a week. So say he signs that $45 million tag, right? I think the Ravens have, what, $25 million in cash space, something like that. So you're negative 20 in the hole. They got to find a way to, to get that right in a week. So it'll be a lot of things happening, a lot of changes. Whereas though, if it's at $32 million, that's only seven. You can get that right really easy. Uh, so many structures, you're there, you're done, right? Um, so in my opinion, listen, um, the non-exclusive the non-exclusive tag is a bad idea. If and only if um, you're not willing to match any offer, it don't matter what somebody put out there, we're matching it. Then the non-exclusive tag makes sense. But if there's a semblance of a team might throw a bag out there that you're not willing to match, that you're not willing to, to put on Lamar Jackson, you can't let him lead the building with two first round picks. So you're backing yourself into a corner. If, it, if, it, if, Ray, if Lamar Jackson gets that non-exclusive tag and the Rays let him go out there and get offers, and somebody puts a crazy offer out there, Steve Bichette will have to come out of his pockets. He's going to have to. Because letting Lamar go, two first-round picks, this is just not adequate value. Um, if you sign that exclusive tag, that's the to me, that's the Ravens shopping for the best offer, right? 
Um, can they get four first round picks for Lamar Jackson? Can they get three first round picks for Lamar Jackson? Can they get a couple of players on the end of it? Um, that's not a scenario that I want to see. You know, I want to see Lamar Jackson be a Raven for the rest of his career, for his entire career. Um, I think he has potential to be the, you know, the best player in Ravens franchise history. And that's, that's including the Ray Lewis's and the Ed Reeds and the Terrell Suggs. He has a chance to reach that kind of ceiling. Because talent-wise, I, this is my opinion, talent-wise, he's already the best offensive player the Ravens have ever had, talent-wise, right? Um, they never really had a guy like him on offense, you know what I mean? They've had great offensive players, you know, you had Jaheeps, you know, you've got, uh, you know, Jamal Lewis and guys, you know. They've had great players on offense, but Lamar Jackson is kind of a different level, and especially being drafted by Baltimore and not being brought here like a, a Derek Mason or Anquan Bolden or a Steve Smith, you know, actually being drafted by this team, losing your starting quarterback that you drafted in five years that's been a good quarterback, it just doesn't happen. And um, this kind of thing, it, it's a bad look for the Ravens. It, it is. With everything that happened last week, with Steve Saunders and all the players coming out, I mean, it had to be at least seven to ten players who came out and spoke out against Steve Saunders. So, which means to me that there's more in the tug who just didn't feel like sharing their story. Uh, which means also that they, they've been talking about these kind of things forever in the building. The Ravens have to redeem their public image. They got to redeem their public image because right now it's as bad as it's ever been. It's in the toilet. So let Lamar Jackson go out there and leave for two first round picks would take their credibility that's already pretty low and drop it into the negative. You can't let it happen. Even trading Lamar Jackson for this um this mother load of draft picks, right? This, this haul of picks, right? Even that is not going to save face. The Ravens have to find a way to strike a deal with Lamar Jackson. They have to. They're an organization that cares about the image. They want to be known as the smart organization, the guy that the people that do things right. The Ravens are almost like they're almost like the Patriots in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Which is even kind of crazy to say for me as a Ravens fan. But you know, the image, they always get cut labeled the smart team. They do things the right way. And listen, when, the, when we saw, we see what's happening with the Patriots right now, they had to rebuild. Even with Bill Belichick still there, even with a good defense still there. They're having to rebuild right now because they don't have to answer a quarterback. Well, we'll see what Matt Jones can do with the actual offensive coordinator. But point being. So for the Ravens to save face, they got to come out of this negotiation looking good. And when it comes to non-exclusive versus exclusive, if the Ravens are scared of matching any offer, you got to put the exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson and just hope you can get a deal done. I mean, I don't have much faith they can. Because what's going to change in between now and June, July, whenever the, the the tag expiration date is to get a deal done that hasn't already happened now. But the non-exclusive deal to me allows Lamar Jackson go out there, see what's out there for you. And when you find something that you like, we'll match it. If the Ravens aren't comfortable matching any offer in every offer, they should not do it. Uh, but that's my thoughts on it, man. You know, we'll see what happens with Lamar Jackson. Um, I want him to be a Raven for life. And hopefully, we, hopefully the Ravens can come to that agreement with him. So we'll see what happens with that, man. Uh, but that's my thoughts on it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you're new here, you stay to this point in the video, go hit that subscribe button, man. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.